Hello, my name is Daniel Schrader, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add a static route to the Linux kernel's routing table. So I have a couple of remote hosts that belong to another subnet than the one my Linux server belongs to. So <clears throat> the way that my Linux server's primary network interface, ETH0, is configured, it's been assigned an IP address of 192.168.1.5. But I want it to be able to communicate with my uh, Linux hosts that are in the subnet 192.168.7.0. In order to do that, I need to uh, add a static route in the Linux kernel's uh, routing table so that the traffic will be uh, forwarded to those hosts. So as we can see right now, if I try to send ICMP packets to my host at 192.168.7.1, they won't go through. So normally we would be seeing uh, packets being sent and receive, so some <laughs> acknowledgments. As we can see, three packets are transmitted, zero were received by the remote hosts, and we have 100% packet loss. So, <clears throat> we execute the route dash n command, and dash n stands for numerical output, so we want the IP addresses to remain IP addresses and not try to be converted to DNS names. So we don't want to rely on any domain name resolution. So what we see here, is that my the Linux server's current routing table uh, only has the 192.168.1.0 by slash 24 CIDR format uh, <clears throat> network uh, in place. So without going too much uh, detail into uh, uh, TCP IP uh, subnetting, um, <clears throat> the way that this is configured, what this net mask means is that there's eight bits left for hosts. So 8 bits left for hosts, um, eight, uh, 2 to the power 8 is 256. So what this means is I have 256 IP addresses available for hosts uh, on the network. And the interface is my primary interface, ETH0. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a static route with add-net and our destination network is 192.168.7.0. The net mask is 255.255.255.0. Again, there's 256 host addresses available in this network. <clears throat> My gateway is going to be 192.168.1.2. And then the device is ETH0. That's my network interface. So now we execute a route dash in again, and we see that the routing table has been updated. So we have a destination network of 192.168.7.0. The gateway to that network is 192.168.1.2. The net mask is 255.255.255. So there's 256 uh, host addresses available for this network. And that route is going to include all traffic uh, going uh, through uh, the network interface ETH0. Now, if we try to ping our remote host at 192.168.7.1, we see that the ICMP packets uh, are received by the remote host. So three packets are transmitted, three are received, 0% packet loss. So that's all it took. So in a sense, here, <clears throat> Linux is fully capable of becoming a router for you. It can do it can do all the routing that you need it to do. Um, you actually don't need a special uh, device that acts as a router on your network. You can connect all of your hosts uh, via Ethernet to layer two switches, and your Linux host can do all the routing for you. Now, <clears throat> the reason why uh, the packets are being transmitted to that remote host is because <clears throat> I have a host that's configured with two IP addresses 
uh, assigned to the same network interface. So basically it's acting as a router that routes traffic between 192.168.1.0 and 192.168.7.0. So <clears throat> I'll show that to you now. So we're going to SSH to 192.168.1.2 which is our gateway into the .7 subnet and I'm going to grep IPv4 string in the slash etsy slash syscontrol dot comp file. Okay, so what we see here is that this net dot IPv4 dot IP under bar forward equals one. So because it's set to a value of one, that tells the Linux kernel to forward IP traffic to the uh, to the dot seven subnet. So this is the switch that turns the Linux kernel into a router. <clears throat> if I disable this, then <clears throat> the host will not forward traffic to the dot seven subnet. I'll demonstrate that for you here by executing another SSH, 192.168.1.2, and then we're going to echo zero to a pseudo, a pseudo file <clears throat> in the slash proc file system and it's the IP forward file. So if we do that, we're actually turning IP forwarding off. And now if we try to ping a host in the dot seven subnet, we're gonna see that it works because, <clears throat> in this case it works because we're sending the host, I mean we're sending those uh, packets to the same host that exists on this server subnet, the 192.168.1.0 uh, subnet. If we try to send packets to a different host on that subnet, we see that the packets won't go through. So 192.168.7.2, they, they stop. They stop at the 7.1 host. That's because that 7.1 host is no longer forwarding traffic to the rest of the hosts on this .7 subnet. See, three packets are transmitted, zero are received, 100% packet loss. So if we re-enable IP, IPv4 forwarding on our 192.168.1.2 host, and we try to ping uh, the 7.2 host again, we'll see that these ICMP packets get through. So three packets are transmitted, three were received, 0% packet loss. So, <clears throat> so what we learned here is that Linux uh, is very powerful. Um, you can manipulate its routing tables and enter static routes in order to route traffic between subnets 